The role of an NBA enforcer can be a very slept on job. The unsung hero prepared to do the dirty work, down for whatever it takes to protect their teammates. Throughout their careers, Kendrick Perkins and Zach Randolph have happily filled that role for their respective teams. But when competition turns to beef, then it might be time to throw hands. A classic beef recipe starts with a little trash talk and escalates from there. Randolph and Perkins followed the cookbook to a T. When Zebo's Memphis Grizzlies faced off against Perk's Oklahoma City Thunder in the 2011 Western Conference semifinals, Memphis snatched game one behind a monster Zebo performance. Despite taking an L, Thunder forward Kevin Durant spoke highly of Randolph. Perkins, who unfortunately was on the receiving end of Zebo's 34 piece, wasn't quite ready to stamp his teammates' assessment. Naturally, Randolph caught wind of Perk's statement and thought he was hating. He claimed Perk was a solid player, but his best defense was to foul. Perk didn't have the speed to stick him, and Zebo wasn't worried about dropping that to the press because he already told Perk straight up. Both of these dudes are bullies for their squads and have gleefully talked shit when presented with an opportunity, but they're not the same player. While Randolph went out for 30 plus in that series opener, Perkins put up two points. Zebo was a silky shooting scorer who could lead a team and also enjoyed mixing things up. Perk was strictly a pure enforcer without the added flair. They were both aggravators nonetheless, but Randolph was uniquely bred for the job. As an undersized big with no bounce, often guarded by dudes taller and more athletic, Randolph had to learn how to play rough down low with a touch of finesse. At Michigan State, Zebo flexed his crafty footwork and smoothness around the rim, leading journalists to draw comparisons to artists at the top of their craft. After Randolph's one year at State, the Trailblazers drafted him 19th overall in 2001, which probably wasn't the best place for an impressionable rookie to land. In Portland, Randolph learned what it meant to be an enforcer on the court under the wing of vets like Rasheed Wallace. He also didn't fear applying those tactics against teammates when he sucker punched a fellow Blazer, fracturing their eye socket. Besides throwing haymakers, Randolph learned to be a bona fide bucket getter and flash signs of stardom across multiple franchises. Except, all those teams were kinda mid. After never finding his footing with the Clippers, missing time because of injuries, and punching people who at least weren't his teammates, LA traded Zebo to Memphis where he landed in the perfect spot to thrive. With their grit and grind mindset, the Grizzlies mucked up games with tough defense. The entire squad was always down to scrap, and right in the center was Randolph making the star turn as the team reached the playoffs in the 2011 season. While Zebo flourished as a franchise cornerstone, Perkins never sought that glory. He preferred operating in the trenches. Drafted straight out of high school in 03 by the Boston Celtics via trade with Memphis, Perk came into the league ready to knock heads. Despite having limited playing time early on, Journalists quickly noticed his ambition to take on the enforcer role. Since Perk was a young buck, Celtics head coach Doc Rivers wasn't pleased with him putting a target on his back, but understood that's how he played the game, which only became more solidified over the years. With the arrival of Boston's new Big Three leading into the 07-08 season, Perk knew his place. He understood defense kept him on the floor and felt perfectly fine being a pure enforcer surrounded by stars. The role not only cut the checks, but got him a championship as he anchored the Celtics defensively during their 08 title run. Then things started to sour in Beantown. After suffering a severe knee injury during the 2010 finals, Boston GM Danny Ainge viewed Perk as damaged goods and dealt them to OKC the following season near the deadline. With OKC, Perk found himself amongst a crop of budding stars and immediately made his presence felt down low, bolstering the team's interior D. Following a first round gentleman sweep against the Nuggets, media members believed Perk could fully show his worth banging against the Grizz front court, 
which, as you know, didn't go well in the series opener. However, Perk got his redemption in game two. He set the tone early by drilling Memphis guard Tony Allen with a tough screen just 14 seconds into the first quarter. What followed was an extremely physical matchup as OKC evened the series. Perk helped hold Zebo to just 15 points with agitating defense that at one point caused the two to lock foreheads. After the game, Perk relished the intensity of the matchup, saying you have to be the instigator and not the retaliator. That quote pretty much summed up the entirety of the series, as both teams went blow for blow in a fiery seven game battle with the Thunder advancing. Since these were two of the more promising teams in the West, journalists expected more playoff showdowns to come, but Randolph, unfortunately, suffered an MCL tear the following year, limiting his opportunities to square off against Perk and the Thunder. Although, when they faced off early in the 2012-13 season, the animosity between the two squads still felt fresh. Both teams came out and played with a playoff-like intensity, with Perk and Zebo barking at each other the entire game until things reached a breaking point late in the fourth quarter. As Russell Westbrook stepped to the line and hit his first free throw, Randolph crossed over into OKC's territory and berated Perkins, resulting in both dudes getting tossed. The ejection only seemed to enrage Zebo further as he tried to run up on Perk, causing a mini scuffle. Usually in instances like this, we have to rely on post-game interviews to decipher what was said, but thanks to the magic of microphones, the broadcast picked up their exchange that went something like this. So yeah, certainly not the most pleasant of exchanges, but Zebo's statement to beat Perk's ass seemed more like a promise than a threat. After being ejected, Randolph tried to enter OKC's locker room where officers and security personnel reportedly had to separate the two. Still hot from the incident, Perk declined to comment after the game, but Randolph didn't mind offering his side of things. Initially, he downplayed the severity of the altercation, saying emotions ran high on the court, but when pressed more, Zebo's tone changed. He claimed there's a lot of bluffing that goes down on the floor, and Perk's all right, but he ain't about all the talk. The NBA later fined Randolph for his involvement, and after the dust settled, Zebo seemed more than thrilled to go into further detail about what went down. During an appearance on a Memphis radio station nearly a week after the game, Zebo confirmed he indeed tried to go after Perk, but didn't get to whoop his ass and wanted the league to rescind the fine. When questioned if he could whoop Perk's ass, Randolph jokingly said he's good with his hands, which didn't seem like a joke when he recounted how many fights he's been in. But what makes Randolph's reaction during that game stand out so much is that Perk wasn't even initially going at Zebo. The reporter pointed out that it appeared Perk had issues with Mark Gasol, but Zebo made it known that any problem with Mark was a problem with him. Perk just couldn't handle getting worked. Remember, this is the same guy who shattered his teammate's eye to protect his friend so we know Randolph is ready to ride for his dudes whenever. OKC and Memphis met again in the playoffs later that season, but while media members expected fireworks, other than your typical chippiness, no serious sparks flew in the series. The Grizz got the best of the Thunder in five games, but as far as beef between our enforcers, things seemed to cool down. When the two squads met yet again in the 2014 postseason, Perk and Zebo seemed ready to put the gloves down and call a truce. Before game three of the series, the TNT broadcast caught a surreal scene of the two meeting at half court, pleading with the referee to let them play more physically against each other. After all the uncourt battles, trash talk, and threats, it appeared the two just wanted to leave it all on the floor and nothing else, which in the eyes of an enforcer makes a ton of sense. I mean, if you give them a little more free reign to bust each other's heads within the context of the game, that eliminates all the extra shit that goes down off the court. The Thunder went on to win that series in seven games, which wound up being the final chapter between Memphis and OKC for the time being. After that season, 
our beefers approach the twilight of their careers, and while they continue to prove their enforcer status in other spats, their hatred toward each other seemed non-existent. In a 2020 ESPN segment, Perk was questioned about his top five all-time tough guys in NBA history, and Randolph cracked the list. Despite nearly going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Zebo fully earned Perk's respect. The following year, during a roundtable discussion of his documentary, 50 for the City, Randolph recounted their infamous run-in and said the two now laugh about that night, joking that Perkins still owes him bread for the fine. Maybe time heals all wounds, but Perk and Zebo were never that different. Sure, they have contrasting skill sets, but when it came down to throwing bows and standing up for their teammates, Perk and Zebo were damn near identical in their roles. At the height of this beef, these were two dudes prepared to take matters into their own hands off the court. But at its core, these were two like-minded hoopers who eventually found everything could be settled on the floor. Yo, thanks for checking out this episode of Beef History. As a known enforcer, our guy Zebo didn't just beef with one person, so check out his feud with Blake Griffin. Plus, we got plenty of more heat on the channel. So don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coming back.